Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drink Man Gaming. I saw you to me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Nevin. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up and let's go. Alrighty. Alright. Hello, Louis. You promised Raygor. You must restrain yourself, at least for now. As we get up, I hear noise from the trees on the side of the road. Someone is heading our way. My ears turn to search for the source of the sound, and as I instinctively prepare to flee, Get out of there! You're scaring them! As if all this violence wasn't enough! I breathe a deep sigh of relief, and out of the corner of my eye, I see a cat doing the same. I'm, it's reassuring to see that I'm not the one, only one still on edge. A little noise in the trees was enough to scare them. Walking along the road without anyone to protect them was a terrible idea. The voice is deep and steady. I'd even say it's monotonous, almost bored. A few seconds later, I can see someone coming out of the trees, and I have to make a conscious effort not to show my surprise. Oh! He's the largest stag I've ever seen in my life. Seriously, I have to look up just to have a chance to meet his eyes. This guy is absolutely massive. And as if to further emphasize the impression the impression he gives, he's carrying a gigantic bow. The weapon is almost his size. How does he manage to shoot anything with that? When my gaze briefly meets his, the only thing I can see on his face is an expression of pure boredom. Then he rolls his eyes before walking away to retrieve his arrows from the bandit's corpses, while totally ignoring me. It's not exactly a feel I'm a feeling I'm used to, and I hate it. My eyes remain fixed on the stag as I search for a way to make, his, to make him acknowledge my presence, in a somewhat subtle way, of course. However, I'm interrupted in my thoughts when the lizard claps his hands, drawing all eyes to him. This may seem a tad abrupt, but I think we should leave as quickly as possible. I suppose you'd rather take a breather, but it's already late and Frostfang isn't close by. Oh, uh, yes, yes, I've had my share of thugs for the day. Lizard laughs at my reaction, however, before he can speak, the panther in armor comes and stands in our way, taking the time to observe us for the entire time. This allows me to spot something rather unusual. As he stares at us with, inqui with an inquisitive curiosity, his right eye moves rapidly, while the left remains completely still, staring straight ahead. There's something slightly unsettling in his gaze, and I can't help but let out a shiver run down my spine. I also notice something else when a cat catches his eye. For a brief moment, his pupil seems to dilate before he regains control of himself. Was it surprise? I'm not sure. See, Ed? No. The cat's reaction is swift. Rarely have I seen an anthrican move his, move his head so quickly to signal his disagreement. It's quite impressive. I wonder how fast he can go. Oh, no, no, no. It's it's a cat. Just a cat. And nothing else, please. There's a brief moment of silence, and I would really appreciate it if someone would fill me in on what just happened. My ears flicker from the panther to the falcon, hoping one of them will make a move. Oh, my God. It's the armored warrior who finally speaks, this time addressing his scaly companion. My lord, I wish to stay behind. Would you mind letting me discuss with... a cat? The lizard looks puzzled for a moment before shrugging as if he doesn't care. You do what you want, as long as you catch up with us once your private talk is over. Without waiting for a reaction, the lizard strides down the snowy road, followed rather quickly by the stag while I stand there, hesitating whether to follow them too or stay with the cat and the panther. You can go. I, I promise I'll be fine. Are you sure? I can stay if you prefer. Don't worry, I'm sure we'll just talk. Go, join them. I'll explain everything later. So be it. Try to hurry, okay? I won't have to pull you out of a pile of snow again because you stood there too long. I wink at him and look in the direction of the panther, who completely ignores me, his attention fixed on a cat. He promised he would explain what's going on here. It's nothing serious. He ended up having to rush to join the other two, quickly approaching the stag with something, in all, something on my mind. I've not forgotten how you completely ignored me until now, sir, and I intend to make sure that changes. The closer I get to the stag, the more I realize that not only does he have a slender body, but on top of that, his antlers affirm his already impressive stature. But in contrast to this elegance, I can see large scars running through his fur, and a huge bow he holds on his back always reminds me that I have a killer in front of me. As I move to, a, as I move to approach him, I see his ears swivel slightly in my direction. She acknowledges my presence this time. Hey, looks like I owe you my life. Nice shot. Way more effective than I am with this. I tap the handle of Erwin's rapier to emphasize my point, which makes the stag, stag's head turn in my direction. He gives me a most unimpressed look, to say the least. At least you tried something, I suppose. A bit suicidal, considering with the strength and number of the opponents, but I guess you figured out that you were dead anyway if you didn't try anything. Is that a compliment? I think so. M maybe? Thanks, because I'm not too bad at frantically waving the pointy part. Now there are improvements to be made, the next step would be to, st be to stick said pointy part in a pert in someone. I crack a smile to my underline, to underline my attempt at humor. It's only, it is my only defense against the adversity of the situation. 
And it seems that my inter my inter my interlocutor God is such an odd word. Interlocutor understands it because he throws me an amused glance. It seems that the prey has found a new way. Oh, would you would you would you like it? Would you look at that? He knows how to rhyme. I didn't know there were sharp minds in the area. Maybe I should be careful. You could be one of my competitors. My joke doesn't really have the desired effect. Stag just rolls his eyes, his expression returning to its bored state. I see you have a tough audience. Maybe I shouldn't overdo it. It wasn't on purpose. Sorry for not breaking the stereotypes you have concerning the capital denizens. Oh, you're breaking some stereotypes, all right. It's rather uncommon to see such a well-armed and efficient herbivore when it comes to, well, poking people. It's kind of impressive, to be honest. A brief moment, I mechanically touched the bloodstained fur on my shoulder. Impressive and deadly. He did not hesitate for a second to kill those two bandits. Many people think or think many people mistake herbivores for prey. I just remind them that anyone can become a predator, given enough courage. The cold calm that the stag exhibits is somewhat chilling. It's possible, if it's possible, to feel even more frozen in this snowy region. He looks absolutely comfortable with what he has done. Not that I expect him to break down in front of me, but Erin has always been in a bad mood and immediately after being forced to kill someone in a fight. The stag just seems perfectly at peace with himself. Yeah, now. One second, y'all. Okay. I didn't expect to break the uh, Okay. A shiver runs down my spine before I come to my senses. Well, I'll try to be polite to him now. I owe him that much, and I don't want to get on his bad side. I, I want to thank you for what you did, and I guess you'd like to know who you saved, so I'm Eloise. I did my job, and I'm Vakad. The half-naked lizard over there is called Tenok, and he is a foreigner, just like your friend. The panther is named Gilliant, and you'll know soon enough who he is. Can't say it was very informative, at least. At least I now have the names of my saviors. I guess that's something. After a glance in the direction of the scantily clad lizard, I return my attention to Vakad. From his clothes and the fact that he's a lizard, I'd say he's from the Empire, and that, and that he's pretty important if he's wearing that much jewelry. It's quite a coincidence that the three of you ran into us. What were you doing around here? Hmm, that's it. Just a coincidence. A uh, scaly, a scaly ass wanted some fresh air, so the big cat ended up having to protect him on the road while I was in charge of guiding them around the area. I guess we're lucky then. But what exactly are you, the masked feline? And the, what exactly are you, the masked feline? And you? If he refuses to give me information on his own, I'm going to have to ask, I'm going to have to question him further. Not that I can force him to talk if he doesn't want to. I'm pretty sure my head fits entirely in one of his paws. Gilliant is the captain of the Royal Guard, and I'm the only Royal Hunter. Wait, what? I suddenly stopped, a bit shocked. I wasn't exactly expecting to find members of the court lost in the middle of the woods. Oh, by the gods, that's their first impression of me. Great! Perfect! Excellent way to introduce yourself. Okay, Louie, now you need to look good. Try to make sure they have something other than poor little lost bunny in mind when they think of you. Oh, only the Royal Hunter, huh? I guess you found your prey, then. The bird is surely a prey, but you... I might need to know more about you. I'm so surprised by this comment that I involuntarily laugh. Me? Not the prey. I stop immediately when I see the serious look on the stag's face. Do you honestly believe I could be a danger for anyone out there? Well, maybe a cat, but anyone else? I don't even have a brand. And you also saw what a great warrior I am. I have seen mice with tongues sharper than blades, and bears tanner than she tamer than sheep. And Frostfang appearance is the only thing you should trust. Those who seem the most harmless are, all, are also the most likely to cut your throat in your sleep. I give him a doubtful look. He's kidding, right? I mean, we're talking about the royal court here. I'm willing to believe there's some intrigue, but nothing too dangerous. Especially for someone who is there to sing and entertain the crowds. I may, as well, I may as well show I'm not too fond of the whole backstabbing thing. I'll do whatever it takes to show you that I have nothing to hide. Hide, then. I'm here for the contest, and I intend to win it. The more you talk, the less convinced I am you're harmless. Like an elm, water time. Okay. I'm used to reading people's emotions. Vakad remains a mystery for now. Most of the time, there's no way to tell if he's joking or serious because he rarely seems to be smiling. It's quite confusing. Another moment of silence punctuated by the sound of our footsteps in the snow. I allow myself to speak again. With the road ahead of us, I might as well try to socialize a bit. So, how interesting is it to, to be a royal hunter? There are pros and cons. It's a stable job, so I guess it's already more than I can hope for. Focus, Eloise. 
Be able to carry this conversation and make sure there's an actual discussion with Mr. Grumpy Horns. Trust, I trust you. But what do you do exactly? Well, besides hunting, I guess. Hmm. Bringing meat to the king's table is part of my job. But it's far, it's far from my only job. As you can see, I also serve as a guide for nobles who want their adrenaline fix and foreigners, and foreigners pray to highwaymen. Surprisingly, the stag allows himself another amused look in my direction. This is the second time he has shown any semblance of emotion. It reassures me a little. Then, when the kingdom meets, the kingdom needs an archer for its little comp competitions. The king sends me. I hate to be a curiosity for the silk bottoms and to hear them gasp every time an arrow hits. Ugh. Picard winces for a moment. His mouth twisted in disgust. I can't help but laugh at, his, at this expression, which makes me, which makes him immediately put on a more serious face. Enough about me. So, you're here for the competition. What are you exactly? A bard? A minstrel? I've never really understood the difference, to be honest. And the stag's sudden interest in me, and my eyes widen in surprise before I can pull myself together. If there's one thing I like to talk about, it's myself. So I straighten up a bit, and a proud look on my face. Ha <laughs> ha! Victory! It can be curious, after all. I would say that traveling bard would be my favorite way to name my profession. And to satisfy your curiosity, I think a minstrel is some sort of entertainer for the nobles. Whereas, I feel more like an artist. The hunter sneers before looking at me quizzically with some perplexity in his eyes. And if you win the contest and you become a royal bard, isn't that kind of the same thing in the end? My kings are open-minded, but that doesn't mean you will be able to do whatever you want just because you feel like an artist. They are fair, unlike most nobles, but just as demanding. Oh, I've never had a problem having the nobles in my pocket. After all, a big part of the job is charming people and, lo and looking and being likable. And seriously, who could say no to that face? I grin as much as I can while trying to look cute, quite pleased with myself. Ah, uh, this is the kind of method that gets you far in many places, but things are different here. Actions speak louder than words. Could the words could easily be the motto of the kingdom? I hope you're as great a singer as you are a hustler, because you won't win and then win them over with your tricks. I have the utmost confidence in my talents, and since you believe that actions speak louder than words, I'll simply beat the comp competition before your very eyes. And then, worst case scenario, I have other assets. I wiggle my eyebrows at him with a look of full of innuendo, insisting on the ass part of the word assets when I pronounce it. Picard seems to hold back from rolling his eyes a second time, a gesture of appreciation for my endless charm, I would say. I'm sure that you'd like to ex- I'm sure that you'd like to expand on your assets, but I must say I'm curious about your feathered friend. He doesn't look too good. Oh, a cat. Actually, I don't know if I can call him a friend. Not yet, anyway. We just met. He was lost in the snow, and I helped him a bit. The bandit's attack shook him up a bit. I hope I can reassure him for good. I don't know what. I don't know what Gilliant. That's his name, right? Picard nods briefly. I don't know what Gilliant wants with him, but Akkad is already looking better when I left him. Look at y'all. Water time. He's a Macadian. Rather friendly, a good traveling companion overall, and a musician. He's also a competitor, then. I know people who would not have hesitated to let him die out there just have a better chance of winning. Well, first of all, his rescue does not jeopardize my victory, and even if it did, I would have saved him anyway. I know the world well enough to understand that good friends are worth more than any reward. My traveling companion can't help but smile. Sadly enough, he, he loses his good mood as he gazes off into the distance. It's like I've managed to break through this through his shell, but that didn't last. I guess it's a nice way to look at life, but you should prepare for disappointment. Seeing my questioning look, the stag shakes his muzzle as if he's waking up. Sorry, I'm very tired. I'm sure you'll enjoy frostfang. There's many things to do in the capital. Even though I'm curious, I'm curious to ask him more about the city, this is clearly not the time to insist, so I turn my gaze to the green lizard before asking, So, what do you know about him? Tanak? Not much. Is he here for the competition, too? I have a hard time seeing what an Imperial noble is doing in Frostfang, especially in such, such a light outfit. I have no idea what he's doing there, but... <sighs> I've, never heard him using, I've never heard him sing, and I'm pretty sure he only knows how to play a flute. I don't mean the instrument. He looks exotic. Tanakh eventually catches my eye and smiles at me teasingly before acting as if nothing happened. I think I understand why you might have some issues with him, but he seems nice. Oh, well, I don't necessarily have issues with him. We come from two very different worlds, that's all. Hearing a noise behind us, 
I turn around and see the panther quickly moving in our direction, trying to catch up with us, accompanied by, accompanied by a cat who almost turns to keep up with the feline. This is Gillian. How well do you know him? He's pretty well. He's pretty well equipped, but not like any other soldier. He's a damn good warrior, one of the best in Frostfang. I wouldn't mess with him if I were you. You'd better be. You'd better please him as much as the kings, because he weighs heavily on their decisions. But I imagine the great charmer that you are, you'll easily succeed in doing so. Cod sneers without even glancing at me. He knows where to hit the bastard. But I also happen to know how to defend myself. I'll show him I'm not that easy of a target. At least as long as we play my game. Of course it'll be easy. My charms have already won you over, after all. I stand with a long sigh of exasperation before giving me a stern look. Because we're having a nice chat doesn't mean you've already earned my trust, little prey. Mm -hmm. I hear you, but I'm sure deep down you like me. He grunts and focuses on the horizon again, obviously enjoying the sudden silence. It seems I went a little too far in my teasing this time. Nothing irreparable, but I hope deep down that it won't affect our relationship. After all, I like this grump I like this grumpy hunter. And it's fun to struggle a bit to win people over. As the silence between us drags on, my gaze naturally shifts to Tenok's back. Alright y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye!